Our lesson today is entitled Call to Missions and is found in Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 15. This is Sunday School lesson for April the 7th, 2019. And my name is Tony Miller. And our key verse for our lesson today is found in the 10th verse of the Gospel according to Matthew. And when he had called unto them his 12 disciples, speaking of Jesus, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This is about a mission. Next slide. So the aim of this lesson is to recognize the disciples' mission in Matthew chapter 10 and identify the challenge that we might experience in fulfilling Christ's mission for the church and prepare for greater participation in the mission of the church. It's my YouTube channel, well over 100 lessons now in my archive. I ask if you would at the subscribing bell and you'll get these lessons automatically and share these lessons uh, um, and leave comments to help encourage me to continue to share the word of God with you. Next slide. So my lessons are always about the context and the content when we transverse through our lesson each week, uh, the International Sunday School lesson text, verse by verse. Next slide. As always, I'll provide you some measure of background for our lessons each week. That background will include some definitions and terms and theories and people and history maps and places. And I share with you this image so this week. It's about this mission. It's an old image from 1967 that probably many of you don't even know or you maybe saw it on, on uh, old television. Uh, our lesson today is about, next slide, uh, not a mission impossible like the tape. That this mission Jesus gave them as a possible mission, and that mission is to go to the lost sheep of Israel and give them the gospel. Next slide. First word the word miracle is usually used to describe any beneficial event that is physically impossible or impossible to confirm by nature. Biblical scholars define a miracle as a less common kind of God's activity in which he arouses people's awe and wonder and he bears witness to himself. Does God's relationship to the world defines this miracle as a direct intervention of God into the world. And that is this whole concept of miracle that Jesus does. Next slide. So these 12 tribes, these lost tribes, these 12, the, this is the lineage of those folks and how they've come into being as Reuben and Simeon, Simeon and Levi and Judah, and Issachar and Zebulon and Dinah, Gad, Asher, Dan, uh, Naphtali, Joseph and Benjamin, the 12 tribes of Israel, Israel being Jacob. Next slide. And I shared with you last week that this tribe, these, this lineage, God's chosen people came from throughout all of the world. All the rest of the world are Gentiles. <clears throat> this is God's people, Israel. And even through time that these people are, have been scattered multiple times and they ultimately are all lost and now consolidating back around Jesus as a word comes out for them to come back to God. Next slide. Apostles, apostles and disciples, and apostles more often than not refers to the initial 12 plus that one, uh, the one that came after um, uh, Jesus Iscariot had um, um, went against Jesus. So you have these 12 and here are the 12, the, the Andrew and Bartholomew and, and on and on. And this is how each one of them died. The only one that did not die a martyr death would be Jude, would be John, uh, John who wrote the book of Revelation that he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos and he died of an old age with all of the rest. Uh, and even Matthias at the end, after the betrayal of, G of, of Jesus Iscariot, he too was martyred. And the standard definition of disciple is someone that adheres to the teaching of one another, is a follower, is a learner, refers to someone who takes up the ways of someone else. And that's what these guys did. They took up the ways of Jesus, applied to Jesus' disciples, someone who learns from him to live like him. Someone, because of God's awakening grace inside of them, conforms 
him or her words into the words and ways of Jesus, that they now pattern after this Jesus and they do the same things that he did. Thus, this whole concept of apostles and disciples. Next slide. Term. Uh, in this, in a, a number of these lessons, we've had the synonymous in this whole lesson of uh, our this gospel according to Matthew, that the phrase "kingdom of, of heaven" in Matthew is synonymous with the term "kingdom of God" in Mark and Luke's gospel. In the first century, the Jewish people expected the coming Messiah, this Jesus, would be would de defeat the oppressors and he and we, and we would kick Rome out and we would rule the earth, and that's what they believed that this whole kingdom of God was. But throughout the gospel, Jesus expand this whole definition and this whole concept that they had about what this, this kingdom of heaven was to mean that dynamic rule and reign of God, this forever reign of God, this forever kingdom of God that will reign forever and ever, not just them here on earth. Next slide. So this week, again, we are in the book of Matthew and a brief a summary of this book of Matthew, that Jesus of Nazareth is indeed the long-awaited Messiah, this king of the Jews, that's foretold by these ancient prophets I shared with you before. And he came to reveal how this kingdom of heaven, uh, how to enter this kingdom of heaven, and this purpose was the very obvious, every, very obvious that the gospel of Matthew was written for the purpose of revealing that the man Jesus of Nazareth, this Messiah, he's a Messiah, he was actually the king of the Jews, that long-awaited Messiah, the sovereign Lord Jehovah, who came into this world revealing to mankind this kingdom of heaven. This king of the Jews, Jesus, this Messiah Jesus, fulfilled every prophecy that was spoken about him in the Old Testament. The prophets spoke of this kingdom that, uh, that the Messiah would bring would be a spiritual kingdom that would never be destroyed. And that's how this book, the gospel according to Matthew is divided. Next slide. So now to our Sunday school lesson, very short this week, only about six, almost seven minutes of background. So hopefully some value to you as we move forward in our lesson today. Next slide. So Sunday school lesson, our call to mission is our, our subject today. That's found in Matthew, the 10th chapter, 10th chapter, verses 1 through 15. And this week, we're going to be in the NIV uh, as our, our text. And we began in verse 1 in the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10. And Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. So, this little verse, but it's, and I have to unpack it. It's going to take me a minute to give you my perspective on it, and hopefully we get some value, and it sets up the rest of this, this lesson that, they, that this 12, this 12 that we saw in the, in the text before, in the, in the, in the lesson before, in, in Matthew, these are the ones that he called, and when he called them, everyone, remember, they, they went immediately. They went straight away. They, they, without delay, they went and they followed Jesus, that, that these disciples are Remember I said this whole concept of disciple is someone because of God's awakening grace within them, they conform to the words of that Jesus, they conform to the ways and, the, and all of the worlds of Jesus. They, they become as imitators of what Jesus, they saw Jesus do. And they follow him because he is worthy. Next slide. So, and, and, Sharing again in the in the in last chapter, last week's lesson in the gospel, uh, according to Matthew chapter four, that that Jesus is now coming into his ministry, and it's been some time now that some events have transpired. But in but originally in in chapter four, that that Jesus was was uh, uh, was uh, baptized by John the Baptist, and then he went into his forty days, and then when he come out of the forty days of fasting, then and ultimately this devil. The devil of Satan is that it's now in this world as he's been in the world ever since Adam and Eve. And, and, and now he, he tells tells Jesus to turn these breads into stone. Come on, you know you can you need to eat. You can turn into bread and stone. He said, or, or jump down here and, and jump down to show your power that you could you could uh, fall on these rocks. And I guarantee the angels will catch you before you even hit us, your foot hit a stone. Or or you know what, I can, I can give you all this stuff and stuff that Jesus didn't really need and 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 it goes on in verse eight and again the devil took jesus up to a very high mountain and and he, and he showed jesus the kingdoms of the world and the glory and the mad the, the the splendor and magnificence and excellence of it all in verse nine and he 
Satan said to him, Jesus, that all these things I give you if you fall down and worship me. Again, the creation asking the creator to worship him. And verse 10, and Jesus said unto him, go away, Satan, get behind me, Satan, for it's written. And forever remains written that you, all people of the earth, shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only that, that how, is, how would I be serving you? And verse 11, that then the devil left him, Jesus. And those angels came and they ministered to Jesus and bringing him food and, and serving him after he's finished this fast. And again, this authority, Satan has no authority over Jesus and that is his whole concept. Next slide. And this is Prince of Power, the heir that we know that he, that uh, although Satan has some power and authority in this current system that exists, that we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rules and all this thing. And but 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 Satan's power is limited, and uh, and uh, and we know that because uh, it's he's always under God's control. That that even when he when God gave him the ability to tempt Job, that he, he gave him it's only a little tempt, and he gave him limitations. And and then ultimately, this power that Satan has is. Is short-lived but God has not revealed why he's given this, this this power to him but he has made it clear that there's only one way to escape Satan's power and that's through Jesus and again that's I'm sharing you with this unpacking this first text that the, that he's given us the power that he's going to give this 12 power over Satan's authority that Satan has because they'll be able to cast out these demons because Jesus has more power than Satan next slide because he is the very word of God. He was there at creation. The word that spoke in all things that existed. That, that the word of God that he had in his bosom was made flesh and dwell among us. 33 years he tabernacled with us. And we've be, we seen, we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the only one who came from the Father full of grace and truth. That he has this power because he is the very word of God. And, and again, that is why he's able to convey this power. Next slide. And Jesus has done this, these miracles and he has this power, right? He, he can, he's conveyed these miracles up until this point that, that he has showed these, 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 these 12, his power that he, that he showed them when he changed the water into wine, right? At the wedding. And, 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 and when they, the great hall of fish, he said, cast the net on the other side in this great hall, they could barely pull it in. And, and he cast off these unclean spirits again, showing his, he has his power over Satan, right? And he cured this uh, Peter's mother-in-law of a fever and, and he healed the leper, showing his power. And he healed the centurion service. And he said, I can speak the word and don't even go there. I can speak it and do it. And, and Jesus raised the little son from the dead. And that, and that found in Luke in 7. And, and, and he has this power. This, this Jesus has the power. Next slide. And, and he has this authority as well. That, that these miracles of Jesus. That Jesus, well, in Matthew and 8. That Jesus, he steals the storm. He, he steals the storm that he, on the Sea of Galilee that he said, peace be still, that he has this authority even over nature. And, and Jesus cures these two de demoniacs. Uh, they're demon possessed. Again, he's showing that he has power over Satan and those demons that, that cannot exist in his face. We find in Matthew 8. And Jesus cured the pure paralytic. And Jesus raises the ruler's daughter from the dead. Again, he has authority over death. And Jesus cured a woman who had the issue of blood that she just wanted to touch his hem of his garment. That's all she needed. That's all the power that Jesus needed to cure her. Cure her. And, and, and Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man. And Jesus loosed the tongue of the man who could not speak. And, and Jesus healed the man who was invalid for 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. We find in John 5, 118, 109. This is that power. This is the authority that Jesus has. And, and now he's conveying this power to this 12. Next slide. That Jesus has the authority and the power. Next slide. So if indeed I have power and authority that I, 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 can, I have the power and I have the, 
legal ability. I can give something away. I can give something. And Jesus, he's showed that he has a power. He has authority. And if he has a power, and he has the authority that he could give that a power, he could grant that power and authority, the decision making. I'm the boss. I can tell this person that today you can be the boss because I'm the boss or I'm I'm a judge. I can give you the power and authority to do because I have that authority. Jesus has that. And now he gives his people, this 12, the ability to cast out evil spirits. Because there's a power and authority is over Satan and those demons. That is to heal every kind of disease because his power and authority is, is greater than the illness and the sickness and diseases. And, and, and Jesus is now conveying this power and authority and giving this gift and power and authority to this 12. For the function he wants them to go on. They go the mission is to, to proclaim the gospel, the good news, the salvation by grace through faith and not by following those laws. Next slide. So this good lesson called to mission is 12. This 12, when we mentioned that, 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 that we find in Matthew in, in verses 2 and 4. And here are the names of those 12. That's the, the first, there's Simon, who's also called Peter, and, and Andrew, who's Peter's brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and, and John, the son, James's uh, brother. And, and Philip and Bartholomew and Thomas and Matthew, who was a tax collector, and James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, and verse 4, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would later betray Jesus and ultimately become uh, exchanged with Matthias. But these are the 12 that at the time, and these are the ones that Jesus is now conveying this power and authority to that they can go out and do this work that he has for them. To do and again he shows that he has this power and authority to convey it to these 12. Next slide. And to share with you that the gospel, uh, harmony of the gospel that they all show who these 12 are. Next slide. And then and they all begin with Peter, James, and John. Those are Jesus' inner circle. Next slide. Sunday school lesson called to mission, verses five and six. And Jesus went out, Jesus sent out this 12. The, with these instructions that Jesus sent this, this people, these 12, these apostles, these, 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 these men who we call them and, and they straightway and they followed him and now he's giving them instructions and he's telling them to go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to Samaritans, but go to the people of Israel, that lost sheep. And I shared with you before that, that the, those, those people that come from the, the lineage of, of, of uh, Jacob, those 12 tribes, that he, I want you to go to the God's chosen people. That's why, why Jesus came. And Jesus came for this mission to go and to, to save those lost sheep. And he's telling them that this is your mission to go after these lost sheep. And last time we saw in, in, in chapter 4 that uh, that Jesus went to the Gentiles and he didn't want them to go to Gentiles or to the Samaritans. The Samaritans are, are the mixed multitude. They're the people who, who, who may not be through the full lineage of Abraham of, of, of Abraham or, or not through, through, uh, through Jacob, but they, they've, they've moved uh, and they follow the, 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 uh, the God of, of the Israelites and that, or they, they've, uh, they have some heritage that's this part Jewish, but not necessarily follow. But he said, don't go to those Gentiles and don't go to the Samaritan, but I want you to go to the lost sheep. Those were part of, of, of Jacob, the lost sheep, God's people, his chosen people. That's where these 12 are to go to spare, spread the gospel message. Next, next slide. And I share with you from last week that when Jesus went in chapter four, he went up north of Galilee. That he went up there in the in the in the region of the Gentiles, and he's already spread the gospel there. And now he sent these twelve back down. The setting of this lesson, they're in Galilee right now, and right near the Sea of Galilee, and that's where they are. And 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 he and he's. He's telling them to go down and don't go to Samaria in the middle, but I want you to go everywhere else where the where the Jews are, where the God's people are, and that's where you spread this gospel message that Jesus is the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, and following him 
and you'll get salvation. That is this gospel message that they're going to salvation by grace. And there they have the power. Because Jesus conveyed to them the power to cast out demons and do this work and reveal to him, reveal to this people that the kingdom of God is at hand. Next slide. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. Again, he came to the lost first, though, those lost children of Israel. Next slide. That those nations of Israel, all the way from Abraham, all the way through Moses, those folks, those folks are scattered multiple times and scattered uh, uh, throughout the time and consolidated back at the time of Jesus. This, this, Tell them about this messianic kingdom, this kingdom that brings it up to the time of Jesus, that the nation, that God's people from Abraham now to Jesus, that's who God's focusing on at this moment in our lesson today. Next one. Sunday school lesson is called the mission that Jesus is calling these 12. And it gives them this mission. Again, that's why I showed you the mission impossible, but it's a possible mission that, that God he tells us 12 to go. And he announces to them that, they, that their goal is to announce that to this people, this lost people, that the kingdom of heaven is near. And I, I, I share with you before that, that, that throughout this, 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 this gospel of Matthew, that God's, that Jesus' definition is trying to make them recognize that it's not just about them going after the, the uh, that Jesus is going to set them into right position with Rome, that he, he wants them to understand that the dynamic rule and reign of Almighty God is a forever kingdom. And it's not just this kingdom that they think right now is going to rule and rule over Rome. That was we learned last, I mean, last time as well. Next slide. And I shared with you last time that we were in chapter four, that Jesus was even preaching to those, those Gentiles uh, north of Galilee. And, and, he, and he said that he wanted the people to, to repent of their sins and turn to this almighty God, this God of the, the Jewish God, the God, the creator of the universe. And he says that he has this kingdom this kingdom of heaven is near. And, he, and even John the Baptist before Jesus, in the days and years that led up before Jesus, in those days he came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and he said to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you go back 700 years over to Isaiah, that even Isaiah says the same thing, that the, he was a voice crying in the wilderness. He said, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight, Isaiah 40 and three, that this is a message this is God's message to his people. This is a consistent message that God has of, of repentance and turning to God because the kingdom of heaven is near. Next slide. Sunday school lesson is called to mission, Matthew 10, verse 8. And again, he, he given this, these 12 this ability to heal the sick and raise the dead and, and cure those with leprosy and cast off the demons and give as freely as you have received. And, and he was our example, right? Jesus was our example. And I showed you the, the miracles that Jesus did. And these these 12, it's no doubt seeing the miracles that Jesus did. And they know that they if Jesus could do it, and Jesus is now conveying this power to us, that we have this power and authority to also do what he says that he's given on to us. Next slide. I share with this, you this slide as well that before Jesus, if you're blind, you're blind and you're blind to, to, to you die and if, or death or if you're lame or you have some kind of infirmity that you would take that infirmity to your grave or that are you a leper, that lepers you died and, and pieces of your body just continue to fall off until you ultimately die and you're cast out of society and, and into leper camps. So if you're, you're possessed by demons, the demons overtake you and the demons have reign within your body and, and if you had a terminal illness, then more likely it would, it would take you out. If you have a curse, if someone put a curse on you, that, that curse would remain until they removed it or, 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 or you, would, you would die with that curse or you're poor in spirit, uh, you didn't have any hope or joy that you that you you probably took that depression to your life to your to your end of your days. Or if you're a Jew, you had to follow that law. If you're a Gentile, you you were nowhere near God because God was not your God. He was not your Papa. Or if you were an outcast in society, you were outcast forever. And if you de you're dead, you're dead forever. Then no one came back from the dead. 
or because of Jesus, the, the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame, uh, they, they walk and they, they're restored, their bodies are brought back into the way that God has designed. If you're a leper, that, 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 God, that Jesus now brings the power and authority in order to, to change you from this condition that, that, would, that would cause your body to decay and, and now bring you into restoration and re restore you back in the side, society if you were possessed by a demon. And now Jesus comes because he has more power and authority over Satan and those demons that fell with him that, that he could cast those demons out. And, and even we sh I share with you that he cast them into pigs and went over a hill, uh, over a cliff. And, and if you had a terminal illness, like even the giants' his daughter, I, I mean, uh, the Syrian Tyrion's uh, his servant, he said he could speak the word and it could even happen if you were cursed that Jesus could remove that curse. Your poor spirit, Jesus lift up your 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 countenance and lift up your spirit because of, of who you are and who you are in Christ because of Jesus that, that, the, that the Jews no longer had to follow the law in order to found, find favor with God and now they have salvation by faith through grace of you are a Gentile. We are without hope and now we have hope because we're now connected to Jesus, the source of our power and, and we're an outcast in society. You draw back to society because you're now related to, to Jesus and because you are dead and that no longer death is not the end of life. That death is beginning of life, a new life in Christ. The old man has passed away, and then at our end of our days, at our death, we share with God in our eternal resting place in his kingdom. Next slide. Sunday school lesson is called to mission. And Jesus speaking again to these 12, and he says that don't take any money for your in your money belts or, or, or no gold or no silver or even no copper coins on this mission. And don't carry a traveler's bag or with a change of clothes or sandals or even a walking stick. No fancy walking sticks. Don't hesitate to accept the hospitality, though, of the people who are going to help you because those who, who work deserve to be fed. If you're going to do this mission for me, you're going to do this mission that you deserve to be fed because you're doing the mission that I sent you to do. That, But he says, don't take these things. And I've provided you a bit of a commentary for this text. Uh, in verses 9 and 10, and, and they were to make no preparation for this journey, but to be dependent upon him, God or Jesus, who sent them, just as they were. They were forbidden to take these kind of provisions of money and food and clothing. They were not to, pro to procure expressly for this journey, or even a, a staff or some fancy walking stick, or even take their, you just take their, their usual staff that they use for walking. This little mission, this first mission, was but the foreshadow of all of the missions that Paul and, and Silas and, and Timothy and all those would go. They were sending out this mission all over the world and even missionaries now in the days that they, these were the first, which ought therefore in spirit er, everywhere to be conformed to these rules. That he says conform to these rules. That, 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 that don't take trust in God and allow, allow God to be the one who sustain you while you're doing the will of God. Next slide. That 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 he wanted them to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding, and all their ways acknowledge him, Jesus. Acknowledge God and, and he shall direct your path. And this is the, the what the purpose for these missionaries and he didn't want them to take any money and, and to take clothes and, and, and he wanted them to, to have some reliance and trust upon him as they go forth and proclaim this gospel message and showing the power and authority that he gave them. Next slide. Sunday school lesson is called to mission verses 11 and 12. And verse 11, and when you enter the city or village Search for a worthy person. Again, Jesus is giving these 12 instructions. And stay in his home until you leave town. And again, they're going to these, gent to these Jewish people. And he tells them instructions what to do. And, and in verse 12, and when you enter the home, give it your blessing. And this is where the house blessing comes from. When you buy a new house, you should get someone to give you a house blessing. And there's many house blessings, or there's many blessings, but I share this one that I found, hope it warms your heart, that it says that, that this is one that you could even say over your home, own house, home, may this home be blessed, and may good fortune follow those who pass through this door. 
safe journeys for those who go forth and safe heart for those who enter. And may this floor lighten the steps of all that tread upon its surface and also provide a stable place to stand in. And may these walls soak in the rich sounds and laughter and loving and loving hung with the art and memories and protection from the fierce winds. And may this roof hold strong and these roots sink day deep. This is home, a place of safety and joy, this place of rest and create a place for me. And may this home be blessed. And again, this is a blessing that, that, that one of these 12 may have said on this house that they would give this, this house blessings. And Jesus tells the 12 to go forth and we enter the home, bless the home. Next slide. Again, Sunday School lesson is called to mission in verses 13 and 14. And Jesus gives us, continues his instructions to his 12 as he's sending them out on their mission, this mission possible. And if it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand, that blessing that you gave them, that, that, that great things would happen in this home, that, that all would come through this home would, would be blessed and all that reside in this home would be blessed. But if it's, but if, but let your blessing stand. But if not, if it's not a worthy home, take your bank back the blessing. Take it back. And verse 14, if any household or town refuses to welcome you or, or listen to your message, this message of Jesus, this message of the kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven is at hand, then shake the dust off your feet as you leave. Then shake it off. And whosoever shall not give you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet and keep on stepping. Again, Jesus provides this counsel to his 12, this call to mission. Next slide. And our last verse in our lesson today, the Sunday school lesson is called the mission, Matthew 10, verse 15. And, and he says, and he continues on and says, truly I say to you that it should be more tolerable for the, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than those in that city that city that, that rebuked him, that city that did not accept him, that, that household that did not accept him. He said, it, it's better that, that you would be better that, uh, than even those who were in Sodom and Gomorrah when, when sulfur rained down and destroyed that city, that, 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 that the judgment is even greater than that judgment upon that city for those who reject the message of the missionary, the missionary proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming the fact that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Messiah has come, bringing salvation to all who believe. Next slide. So I provide you a commentary on the last four or five verses. Or the, the disciples were instructed to minister to those worthy to receive the proclaimed word. The worthiness of a person is determined by their willingness to hear the good news of the kingdom of God. This kingdom of God is at hand. The Messiah has come. The turning disciples away was equivalent to injecting the, the Messiah himself. That Jesus also prepared the, the disciples for the anticipated rejection. He told them that if they were not welcome, Jesus told them to leave and shake the dust in their feet, a gesture that was triggered that triggered people make from making wrong choices not to receive Jesus and again Jesus he told the disciples that those who rejected the the word they rejected the, the Messiah they rejected the good news they rejected this kingdom of God were worse off than the people who were destroyed in the cities of God Solomon and Gomorrah that God destroyed because of the witness. That Jesus offers the opportunity of salvation to all of us. And he cautions us not to so ignore this call and, and that this opportunity may never come back again. And that's what, 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 what Jesus is telling these this 12 as they went forth to proclaim this message, to complain the message of the kingdom of God is 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Messiah has come. The salvation has come for those who trust and believe in Jesus. That 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 now this this opportunity is going to come, but you may not have an opportunity again. That if you miss it, you'd be worse off than Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'll share with you why. Next slide. That that if if you're missing Jesus. That yeah, the, the fiery rain that fell down on Sodom and Gomorrah was was a bad event. But falling into the lake of fire and being tormented for the remainder of your existence is a far more worst event. Next slide. That these were the first missionaries to preach the gospel. That this 12 now going out to the, the the Gentile nations to proclaim the good news, to proclaim the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is in hand. The same message that was sent out before by all the apostles in the Old Testament, but, but now Jesus is going to, he's sending out the 12, these first missionaries to preach this gospel. Next slide. That. Jesus had this authority to give them the power and authority to go forth. He gave them the power to cast out demons, to, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. He gave them this power and authority because he was in the world and the world was made by him. Again, it's, he was the very word of God that spoke to these things that uh, existed and the world knew him not. But ultimately, these the twelve are going to go out to the, the, this, this, this people, these lost people, and they will not receive him. Unfortunately, over the time and over time, and, and ultimately, the, the Jews will not accept this Messiah. Next slide. So he came into his own, his own received him not. But there's a but here. There's this clause. But as many as received him. And many did receive him, and many of the Jews were the first disciples, but also the, the Gentiles were also grafted into the family of God. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, John 1, 11, and 12. Next slide. So our lesson today was this call to mission that Jesus sends out the 12 to the law sheep of Israel. That Jesus offers an opportunity for salvation to all of us. He sent out an opportunity to those 12 to follow him. Follow and recognize that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he, Jesus, causes us, cautions us to not ignore this call just like they should not ignore that call. This opportunity may not come again, and, and many people come and they sit in the sanctuary, and, the, and the, the man of God stands behind the sacred desk and proclaims the gospel of Jesus. And they have an opportunity to accept this gospel message, and that's what the call of mission was. That's what these 12 were going out. That's what we do out, that we do in our life. We go and we share the gospel to the lost sheep. And Jesus offers an opportunity for salvation to those who would hear. And he says, do not ignore this opportunity because your option is ultimately a lake of fire with torment for all of your days. And that is his whole mission. This is the first missionary that goes out and, and it's, we're incumbent to do the same thing, to go out to the lost sheep. That is what this mission is about, this call to mission, the 12. And now... It's also conveyed to us the word to go out and share the gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Next slide. And that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. This call to mission, Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. And I hope something you've learned today is, is helps you along this path. My prayer for you that something you've learned today strengthens your faith as the Lord provides all of your need. That you learn something worthy of sharing. Enjoy learning about being called to the mission, this mission to loss. That, that Jesus called the 12, he equipped them and he gave them power and he gave them authority in order to fulfill that mission. He gave them a charge. And that is we are called as well. 
and you're encouraged today to learn with us. And I ask you to hit the subscribe and bell button and get these lessons automatically. And I share with you benediction. As always, Heavenly Father, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your name. In the name of your son, Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. He's the one who sends us out with this mission to proclaim the world, to tell the world of this magnificent Messiah. It is in his name we do pray and ask these things. Amen. Thanks so much for your time. Amen.